to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim the news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. In the book of Amos, God asks Israel and the nations around whom he's reaching out to, can two walk together unless they are agreed? Amos chapter 3, verse number 3. We welcome you today to our study of the minor prophets as we think specifically today about the power-packed message of the book of Amos. Amos, who was a tree tender and a shepherd, he gives a great powerful message to Israel during the time of wickedness to remind them to come back to God. And what a powerful message. It ought to be for us as well today. And so we're so glad that you've joined us for our study of the Minor Prophets today. Uh, as always, we want you to know that today's lesson is being brought to you by individual Christians and congregations of the churches of Christ in your area. These Christians in the Lord's Church would love for you to visit the local congregation in your area. You could stop by on Sunday morning for worship, or Wednesday or Sunday night for worship and Bible study, and you will find people there who love God deeply, who are concerned about what the Bible says, and who would be happy to sit down and study the Word of God with you. Maybe you'd like to know more about the church or the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news of Christ, Whatever biblical subject you might be curious about, you'll find people there who'd be happy to sit down, open up the Bible, and in kindness and love, talk to you about God's truth. And so check out the Lord's Church in your area. Also, we'd love to help you in your journey to know God's Word better here at The Gospel of Christ. You can check us out from our website, thegospelofchrist.com. From there, you can access all of our audio and video lessons, today's lesson as well. If you need a copy of that, just fill out a media request form. We'll be glad to make that available to you. We've got lessons of a plethora of topics as well as every book in the Old and New Testament. And all of that's available for download online as well. And so check out our website, thegospelofchrist.com. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and visit our Facebook site as well. A lot of updates there as well as our app that's available for both Android and Apple phones. As we think today about the powerful power pack message of Amos, Amos is writing during the time of King Uzziah of Judah and King Jeroboam II of Israel, somewhere around the 750 BC area. Historically speaking, the background of Amos occurs in 2 Kings 14 and 15, and it, it, it was a difficult time. Of the reign of Uzziah in Scripture, the Bible says he did what was right in the sight of the Lord and called according to all that his father and Messiah had done, except the high places were not removed. The people still sacrificed and burned incense on the high places. Then the Lord struck the king so that he was a leper until the day of his death. So he dwelt in an isolated house and Jotham, the king's son, was over the royal house. And so there were problems in Judah. The, 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 the idolatrous temples were not taken down. They're still serving them in some ways. And there were also problems in Israel. Of the reign of Jeroboam II, the word of God says, he did evil in the sight of the Lord. He did not depart from all the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin, 2 Kings 14, verse 24. And so, like most of the other prophets, these were dark and sinful times in Israel and Judah's history. And so, God sends a prophet. Amos was not what we might think of as a professional prophet. According to Amos 7, verse 4, he was kind of a, a tree dresser, what we think of as a nursery man, and he was a, a, a farmer, a tender of sheep. But Amos comes with a powerful message. 
Amos 4 verse 12 is probably the key verse to the whole book where God says to Israel, prepare to meet your God. Friend, Israel needed to know. Judah needed to know. There will, if you keep worshiping these false gods, you keep following Jeroboam and the sins that he's got you in, there is a day of reckoning come, coming. You cannot escape the consequences of persistent sin against God and others. And so the idea of judgment day, the idea of a day of reckoning coming, is surely a powerful message that's found throughout the book of Amos. Amos begins by reminding us of the value of life and the value especially of human life from the earliest stages forward. Look at Amos chapter 1. I want you to see not a lot unlike our times today. Not, a, not unlike our times today, there were people who didn't value human life even in the womb. Look at Amos 1, verse number 13. I want you to see the sin that God calls out here. The Bible says, Thus says the Lord, For three transgressions of the people of Ammon, and for four I will not turn away its punishment. Well, what were they doing? Because they ripped open the women with child in Gilead, that they might enlarge their territory. These people are wanting to make their borders and their, and, and their people larger and their neighbors smaller and their property less. And it's a power and a pride and a possession type of mentality. And in the process, they're finding the pregnant women. They're ripping them open with the child, causing that child to be aborted and the baby to be lost and their numbers to go down. Friend, God says them doing that. They're ripping open the women with child. That was a transgression. That was sinful against the will of God. And throughout the Bible, it's that way. Exodus 22, verse 21, if two men fight, a woman who is uh, the husband of one of them steps in the middle, who's pregnant, she, the baby is injured. If no harm comes to the baby, a fine would be imposed on the person who hit her. But if some harm came to that baby, the Bible says eye for eye, tooth for tooth, life for life. That adult man who harmed that baby's life, who killed it, his life would be forfeited for the life of that unborn child because children are a gift from God. It says a lot about the depths of sin and immorality that the people around them had sunken into when they were ripping open the women with children and causing those babies to be aborted and die. What does it say about us today? God still views children as a gift. A child's life inside the womb is still no less of life than a grown man. Friend, we need to really take stock and ask ourselves, are we any different than these people of Ammon? If we are allowing these things to happen. If we don't stand up and become a voice against the immorality around us. But you know, when you think about Israel, it's their stubborn rebellion. It's their rebellion against God and his will that would ultimately lead to their downfall. Look at Amos chapter 2, verse number 12 with me. Look at what they're doing. It says to Israel, you gave the Nazarites wine to drink. And you commanded the prophets, saying, Do not prophesy. Now, as you study about the Nazarite, he was one who separated himself. There were laws and things he couldn't do. He couldn't eat grapes. He couldn't drink wine. The cutting of it, all of that were laws given by God. And instead of helping to encourage that, they're actually tempting him to sin. They're saying to the prophets, Don't tell us what God says. Their stubborn, rebellious heart is the real problem. Friend, when we think about Israel, we've got to each look at ourselves and ask, do I have a heart to do what God says? Is my heart humble and open like clay in the potter's hand? Or do I have a rebellion inside of me that can only come from evil and from the devil? You see, some in the New Testament 
When Paul would say, preach the word, some of them had itching ears and they didn't want to hear that. They heaped up for themselves teachers after their own desires. Do we want to hear what God says and do what he says? Or do we want to tempt people and get involved in that spirit of rebellion against God? To be right with God, there has to be unity with him. This is why Amos asked this great question. Can two walk together unless they agree? If two people, two people can't go through life, if they are diametrically opposed in their thinking, in their outlook of life, in their morality, in their religious ways, that they're just going to butt heads all the time. Two people like that aren't going to work out very well. If you have two oxen hooked up to a, to a yoke and one of them is really strong and one of them is weak and sickly, th that's not going to pull, that's not going to work. They're, not, they're, they're unequally yoked together is the idea. Now listen to the question of Amos 3 verse 3 again. Can two walk together unless they are agreed? Can man walk hand in hand with God if he's way back here not doing what God says, rebellious and not following God's will? Friend, that type of relationship just won't work. And so this is why God sent Amos and God sent a powerful, uh, chilling, awakening message through the prophet Amos. Listen to how that message is described in Amos 3, verse 8. The Bible says in Amos chapter 3, verse 8, A lion has roared. Who will not fear? The Lord God has spoken. Who can but prophesy? When God speaks, I need to hear and I need to listen up. That's the idea. Imagine it this way. Let's say you're in the zoo and you hear the lion roar. Well, you can hear that from everywhere, and your probably first thought is, I'm glad he's behind that fence, and I'm not. Can you imagine if the lion roared, and you were out in the bush, and it was really close to you? You would really pay attention to your surrounding and what's going on because of that voice. Friend, that's the idea. God's spoken. We have his word today. We need to listen carefully to that message. You know, there's a, there's a common refrain to every one of the seven churches in Asia Minor in Revelation 2 and 3. To him that has ears to hear, let him hear. What's God saying? I gave you ears for a purpose for you to listen and hear and do what I say. And so we need to take heed to the word of God. Jeremiah 22 verse 29, O earth, 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 hear the word of the Lord. That word is powerful. Hebrews 4 verse 12, it's living and powerful. And if we receive with meekness the implanted word, that word can save our souls. James chapter 1 verse 21 and 22. And yet, for some of these people in the book of Amos, it was almost too late. Listen to Amos chapter 4 verse number 12. God says in Amos 4 verse 12, therefore thus will I do to you, Israel, because I will do this to you, prepare to meet your God, O Israel. You know, Amos 4 verse 12 is not like, okay, it's time to get everything ready, and now's time to prepare, and you've wasted all this time in sin and rebellion, but you've got a little time remaining. Let's get ready. Now, that, that's not the idea. The idea is the door's shut. Judgment's coming. You better get ready for it. It's happening. It's not as though you've got more time to correct things. That's as though time's over and judgment's coming. That's kind of the idea of Amos 4 verse 12. You know, sometimes we can get caught up so much in sin and people can get so hardened in their way of life, and they can be involved in that for so long that their heart's hard. And the Word of God has trouble affecting that hard heart. First Timothy 4, verses 1 through 6. And so we've got to ask ourselves, have we got to that point? Friend, as long as we have opportunity right now, we can still correct that. But the longer we keep in that, and the longer we keep doing that, the further away from God we're going to be. And so the book of Amos, it teaches us instead of being rebellious to God, we need to do what God says 
in Amos chapter 5, verse number 15. Would you look at this verse with me? Just a simple statement. Hate evil, love good. Establish justice in the gate. It may be that the Lord God of hosts will be gracious to the remnant of Joseph. What does God want of me? Hate evil, love good. Doesn't that remind you a lot? Of Romans 12, verse 9, cleave to what is good, hate that which is evil. That's a running theme throughout the Bible. Christians, we don't flirt with, we don't think it's fun, we don't look at it as something to be bragged about, we don't think it a notch in our belt. When it comes to evil, we need to hate that. Hate that for what it does to God. Sin breaks the heart of God. Ezekiel chapter 6, verse 9, hate evil for what it does to me. Sin separates me from Almighty God and hate the evil because of the ultimate consequences. Those who live in sin and die in sin will spend eternity in hell, separated from God. And so we hate the evil, but on the flip side of that, we love that which is good. Whatever is good, upright, holy, think on these things. We wanna live that, we wanna promote that, we wanna be the best we can to live for God each and every day. But you know, as God continues this message to Amos, uh, to Israel through Amos, uh, God reminds them that at some point, punishment, it's going to be inescapable. If, if a person continues to live in rebellion, spiritual adultery, Israel, if you keep going up to these high places and you keep offering these sacrifices and worshiping these false gods, one day that punishment is going to be inescapable. Look in Amos 5, and I want you to notice what God says in verses 19 and 20. This is such a graphic picture. What's it going to be like? Verse 19 of Amos 5. It will be as though a man fled from a lion and a bear met him, or as though he went into the house, leaned his hand on the wall, and a serpent bit him. Is not the day of the Lord darkness and not light? Is it not very dark with no brightness in it? Now, of course, we're talking to people who are caught up in sin. And these people think they've escaped, okay? They think the lion was chasing them and they somehow outran him or they somehow got away. And as soon as they get away from the lion, there's a bear that takes them out. They think that they can run into the house where everything's going to be safe and they, they put their hand up on the wall. A snake bites them. What's the idea? You may think, God says, that you can keep running. You may think you can keep looking for places of safety. There's no place that you can get away from my judgment. Numbers 32, verse 23. Beware, be sure, your sin We'll find you out. Friends, sometimes we think to ourselves that God will never know. Well, we can get away with this, and, and maybe one day we'll get it right, but we can keep living and doing and acting like we're doing, and, and everything's going to be okay. God will never know. Hebrews 4, 13 says it this way, And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are open and naked, before the eyes of him with whom we must give an account. John said, I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and books were opened, and another book is opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged according to the things written therein. God knows. God has a record. There will be a day of accounting. One day, every knee will bow, Every tongue will confess to the glory of God that Jesus is the Christ. Don't think to yourself. Let's not think to ourselves. I can keep getting away with this. God will never know. It'll be okay. Punishment, like for Israel, is one day going to be inescapable. And so that reminds us to not grow lax spiritually, but to keep growing in the grace and knowledge of God. Look at Amos chapter 6, verse number 1. Woe to you who are at ease in Zion and trust in Mount Samaria, notable persons in the chief nations to whom the house of Israel comes. God says, whoa, 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 wait a minute now. 
All you people that have got relaxed, all you people that are taking it easy in Zion when there are all these problems going on, you need to wake up. Don't get lax spiritually. Don't let that spiritual fire go out. Don't let your fervor for God uh, go down. We've got to stay on guard, right? That, that's, that's the point here. Stay alert. 1 Peter 5, verse 8. Be sober. Be vigilant. Why? Your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. We need to be reminded what Jesus said. What I say unto you, I say unto all. Watch. Be ready. Don't get lax spiritually. Don't, don't, don't be lulled into a state of spiritual stupor. Don't let the voices around you, the comforts of the world, all the problems that are out there, don't let that lull you into a state of spiritual uh, stupor. Instead, wake up. Realize how important it is that we stay uh, alert and on fire for Almighty God. And friends, sometimes that means when our lives, when in our lives, when in the world around us, there's a great spiritual famine, we realize the need to not be affected by that. Look at the famine that was going on in the land of Amos. I want you to look in Amos chapter 8. Look in verses 11 and 12 with me. Look at the spiritual famine that they were facing. God says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord God, that I will send a famine on the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. They shall wander from sea to sea and from north to east. They shall run to and fro, seeking the word of the Lord, but they shall not find it. God's people had been richly blessed in that God gave them the law. God gave them access to the law. God gave them prophets who would remind them of the law, priests who should have been repeating and teaching the people the law. And God says, you need to wake up and here's why. There's a day of spiritual famine coming. People will be running around in a state of famine. But that famine is not of bread, not looking for food. And that famine is not of thirst, looking for water. But there is a dearth. There is a famine, spiritual famine for the word of God. Friend, we have it. The people of God had it so well then in that God's word was readily available. And what about us today? We have such easy access to the Bible. Nearly every home has a copy of the Bible. It's available everywhere we can see. We can find the Word of God. You can get it on your phone. You can get it on your tablet. You can get it on your computer. We have such easy access to the Word of God. But it hasn't always been that way. There have been times where people had to work hard where it was chained inside cathedrals and things like under that. Don't take that for van advantage of. Let's make sure that we realize it's the word of God that's so important. John 8, 32, Jesus said, you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. Friends, since we have the word of God so readily available, doesn't this remind us to give ourselves to it, to study it, 2 Timothy 2, verse 15, to approach the word of God and ask, is there any word from the Lord? Jeremiah 37, verse 17, to have a part that wants to seek after God, to prove all things, 1 Thessalonians 5, 21, and to follow God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, Mark chapter 12, verse 30 and 31. Now, there, the book of Amos closes with a very beautiful picture a picture that Acts 15 really unfolds for us in a beautiful way. Now, remember, Amos is written uh, toward the close of some of the close of Israel's history. Uh, the minor prophets are leading up to times of captivity. We're many years after the years of David and Solomon and all those people have been dead and gone for a long time. But watch the prophecy of Amos 9, verses 11 and 12. Look at what the scripture says. On that day, I will raise up 
the tabernacle or the temple of David, which has fallen down and repair its damages. I will raise up its ruins and rebuild it as in the days of old, that they may possess the remnant of Edom, all the Gentiles who are called by my name, says the Lord who does these things. Now, what in the world are we talking about? The tabernacle or temple of David restoring all the, a lot of that is long gone. What's the picture of here? Well, the Holy Spirit tells us what it is in Acts chapter 15, verses 13 following. And after they'd become silent, James answered, saying, Men and brethren, listen to me. Simon has declared how God at first visited the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. And with this, the words of the prophets agree, just as it is written. After this, I'll return, rebuild the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down. I will rebuild its ruins. I will set it up so that the rest of mankind may seek the Lord. Even all the Gentiles who are called by my name, says the Lord who does all these things. What was Amos really prophesying about? Peter says, or James says, what Peter spoke about, that the gospel began with the Jews in Acts chapter 2 that it, the doors were opened up in Acts chapter 10 to Cornelius and his house, that now all men everywhere can receive the gospel and become a member of Jesus' church. That was the ultimate fulfillment of Amos' prophecy of rebuilding a temple of David and all nations could flow to it, much like Isaiah chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. And so there is hope. There is a remnant. There is a group of people who can be God's people today. That group is the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, my friend, we ask you today, have you obeyed the gospel just like they did in Acts chapter 2? Have you heard the message? Do you believe Jesus is the Son of God? Would you repent and turn from sin? And would you be immersed for the forgiveness of your sins? If you're not a child of God, we encourage you to do that. If you are a Christian, Let's examine our spiritual state. Let's make sure we're right with God and following the gospel of Jesus. And please join us next time as we study more from the Minor Prophets. Today's closed captions are brought to you by Christian Family Bookstore in Chattanooga, Tennessee. We encourage you to visit thechristianfamilybookstore.com for all your Christian book needs. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the churches of Christ with its whole aim to take the Gospel to the whole world. We do that through TV, internet, free media, and streaming. Our motto truly is to take the whole Gospel to the whole world, and we believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious programs, today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. The gospel of Christ. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On-demand downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call 844-6-GOSPEL. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the gospel of Christ.